What's up, everybody? I am so excited to be back. Um, uh, I'll kinda, I guess I'll kind of wait for people to come in. So, YouTube, we're on Instagram Live. So, if you want to jump on here, uh, learn about this. Just see this when it's live. It's Instagram handle at Anchor Vale Photo. At Anchor Vale Photo. So, um, really excited. So, I'm going to start jumping into this. I'm really excited to be back. And, man, I know I said I was going to do this more often than I was, but things got a little crazy. But now I'm back. And now I'm going to start diving into the how we shot it again. So um, today we're going to go through um, one of my favorite photos. This one always, so when we first posted it, it got a whole lot of um, people liked it a lot. And then we posted it again because they were getting married. Um, people liked it a lot again. So we're going to uh, dive into this shot and how we shot it. Um, a this is one of my favorites. So this is the shot right here. Uh, you may have saw this on Instagram. Um, but we're going to dive into and show you guys how we got this shot, how we achieved this. Because it's something, it's a little bit different. It's not like a normal uh, shooting technique. It's called Brenizer Effect. Um, it's a method after a guy named Ryan Brenizer. He lives in New York. He's an incredible photographer. Um, but what it does is it essentially takes the um, it takes uh, the compression. So what it does is stitch photos together. Um, it stitches the photos together so that, like, instead of shooting a 35 millimeter, like, so I like shooting 35 millimeter, but I also like shooting 85 millimeter lens. And so in doing so, what this does is this takes the compression that an 85 millimeter lens has, and then I can stitch the photos together, stitch them around, um, and then it brings in the, um, that compression but keeps that wide angle that a 35 millimeter would have. And so it's a super unique. It's a very like mystical kind of ethereal look to it, which is really, really cool. And so I'm going to walk through um, like my process of how I – Think about going, like think about when I want to use a um, Brenizer method or like a, one of those, it's also called a Boca Panorama. So when I want to use a Boca Panorama or a Brenizer method, um, when those times are, and then how I make them happen. So I'm really excited to kind of walk through this. So if you guys have questions along the way um, or YouTube, you guys have questions, let me know and I will answer those questions for you. But I'm just going to kind of walk through and show you guys the process of how I created this photo. So... Um, Again, this is the final photo. Uh, I'm going to tilt the screen a little bit this way. If you want to see a little bit more of the screen, like all the settings, if you can't see them here, you can also see them on our YouTube channel. So like on our YouTube channel, I'll put this up, and you'll be able to see how we shot this. Hey, Beards, we love you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, so we're going to walk through this, and I'll show you the process. So this is Emily and Philip. They recently got married. Um, they're awesome. But here's kind of what we did. We found this really awesome area, and I shot this with an 85 because I like the compression. And we walked through, so here are some different, like, here are some different poses that we did with them. Um, and then eventually we got to this one right here. So this is the raw, this is kind of the raw, unedited version of this photo. Whoa, getting crazy. Raw, unedited version of this photo. And then um, I'll show you guys also what it looks like in an 85 and a 35. There's slight changes. But I think those changes make the world of difference. Um, so here is, uh, I'm just going to go into like what I do. So of course, we're going to go to develop here. I'm actually also going to use the loop deck to edit this today. So pretty excited about that. But um, let's go into this, this photo and then this editing here. Um, I'm going to put our preset on. So you see that our preset is automatically applied. Uh, I'm going to crop it a little bit, and I'm also going to change the white balance. I know that I wanted this to be fairly warm. You can see like highlights back here in the um, highlights back here in the the trees where the sun was coming through. Um, and so then I'm also going to bring this up because the exposure is a little bit dark, and uh, bring the highlights down slightly. And that's super simple. So um, now as I walk through this process, I'm going to show you guys like how I got. Um, the stitching and everything like that. So check this out here. Uh, going through that, you'll see. So this is the shot that I decided I wanted to use. Sometimes I'll use other ones, but this is the one I decided I wanted to use. Um, and then I went ahead and I shot around. So I literally am just shooting around the couple. You can actually see the couple in here sometimes, like right there. There's their head right in there. Um, and then I'll just keep going around so I get the surrounding areas. See, like there's their feet. So I get the couple. And now when I do this, what I usually do with the couple is I tell them, okay, so like for the first couple of seconds, I'll have them, I say, okay, go ahead and like stand there um, and get in the pose. And then once I take their photo, start going around, um, then I, I, I'm i done with it. I don't need to, um, 
I don't need them to stay in that position anymore because then I'm just going to stitch the surrounding areas. Now, I shoot, I think this one was a 20 photo stitching. Um, I have a friend, Binge Heish, so look him up at Binge Heish, an amazing photographer. Him and I talk about this all the time because his, his uh, Brenizers are Boca Panoramas. He only does like three to six images max, whereas I'm doing 20 images here in how I do this. What up, Matt Kennedy? You are the man. Um, so as I'm doing this, I'm actually stitching 20 photos together instead of just um, three to six as Binge does. And so, um, but I like it that way. And what I make sure I do is I stand far enough back. I'm probably about 10 or 15 feet, maybe 20 feet with an 85 especially, because if I shoot and I do this panorama around them and I'm too close to them, then it becomes distorted because um, I'm stitching together a different perspective than what I want. So I want a very like portrait style perspective. So I'll get back. I allow the 85 to get more compression in, and then um, and then it actually is a little more even without distortion because I can stitch around them without having to look down at my camera. My camera just without looking straight down at my camera. My camera slightly goes down to get the kind of the context of where they are. So you can see um, you can see as I do that here. Um, I'm I've got. I'm going right around them, right around, so this is up and around. So you can imagine where this is, and now this is going right under them, and then another layer on the outsides and up. Um, and so then, that ultimately gets to this photo here. As I do that, so so from here, this is the same exact photo. Uh, let's see, let me brighten up this, yeah. Make that a little bit warmer. So this is the same exact photo of this one right here. So you can see the pose is exactly the same except now um, they just look a little bit different. So what I'm gonna take here, because I like this lighting and everything, I'm just gonna copy this to the rest of the surrounding areas. Um, and so that's gonna look something like this. You can see that I've synced up my, um, I've synced up everything, so no longer does it look like it's raw, right out of camera. You can see that even the branches and everything are synced. Now from there, from there I'm gonna take that whole lot, and what I'm actually gonna do is, now what's great is, I haven't used this yet as much, but what's great is in, um, sorry, my cat needs to move. So in uh, Lightroom, you can actually um, panorama them all together, but I use another, another um, sorry, I use another program that I like, like called Auto Pana Giga. It's just so easy, it's super intuitive, and it works really well. So I'm gonna come here, and I'm actually going to export all of these files, and I'll show you my export. I, I don't care. I'm going to show you guys what I use to export, like uh, all of the, 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 the whatever, the export settings. So I'll come down here. I have a pano setting. So I create a new folder here, um, and I keep the quality at 100. Um, I, I just sharpen for the screen slightly. I don't change anything else. It's at 100, 300 DPI, um, really, similar, really easy, nothing crazy going on in here. Uh, and so then I export that, and so I kind of sped up the process so you guys don't have to wait for that whole export. Um, so I export that, and so then what's going to end up happening is I'm going to take, I'm going to open up Autopana Giga like this. It's going to look like this right here. And what Autopana Giga is going to do is I'm going to drag the folder. I have the folder here created. I'm going to drag the folder, and Autopana Giga is going to actually pick up on all of that. It's going to detect it. So when I put detect, it's gonna detect and it's actually gonna stitch that together, which is really, really awesome. Makes it super easy and it's gonna come out looking something, give me a second. It's gonna come out looking, well, technology, right? Okay, it's gonna come out looking like this. So it's gone ahead and it stitched it for me. And from there, I usually crop. Um, so this is the crop that I want right here. And then, as I do that, then I render it. Now, the rendering usually takes a while, but I've gone ahead and done that already for you guys. So here's the rendered file. So what Autopana Giga does is it puts those together and it stitches all of them and it came together with this file right here, which is extremely close to what, oh, you can't see, sorry, which is extremely close to what uh, my final product is, um, which is great. And so then what I'll do is I'll take that and I'll drag that back into Lightroom. Um, and so what I've done a little bit is uh, I've just come in and I've cropped off the edges. Let me see if you can see it. Yeah, you can see right here, I've cropped the edges. Oh, guys, there it goes. You can see where I've cropped the edges here. Um, I've actually even warmed it up a bit. So I've come through and I've warmed it up, changed the tint. So like this is what I did for the final. Um, let's see, if I go straight out of, this is what it looked like straight out of Auto Pana Giga. Nothing crazy different, but I wanted to warm it up slightly. So now this has become like a TIFF file, which is just a large JPEG file. And then I've come through and I've con added some contrast to it. 
Now, what I want to do here is show you guys the difference. It's a slight, slight, slight difference between this and a... Um, I'm going to show you guys the difference. It's a slight difference between this shooting at 85 and stitching them together rather than just using the... Uh, just using a 35 millimeter lens for this. So um, this is this, here's the difference here. So here's one file. So this is the 85 stitched together. You can see there's a lot more compression and even a huge drop off in the depth of field. Whereas this tree right here is crazy, like in, fo in focus, it's very sharp. Like this area right here where they're standing, it's actually not really the tree. It's right in front of the tree where they're standing is very sharp and in focus. But literally five feet behind them is just a drop off of depth of field. It's just a creamy, creamy look. Whereas if you see what I have here with the 35, this is a 35 shot in the same exact spot. Um, and let's look at the settings here. I did shoot this one with, um, so if I come here, let's change. Okay, so settings here, you can see that I shot this at 1 250th of a second. So 1 250th of a second, 1.8, 1250 ISO with an 85. Whereas this one's a little bit wider, um, a little bit um, shallow, or not shallow, a little bit more not as wide, I guess, because it's got, um, because the dog, I want to get the dog in focus. So this is 2.8 um, with 35, but you can see that there's not nearly as much compression. So from here, the trees are brought in a bit. I mean, there's a super creamy depth of field fall off in this area right in here. But then also with this, with the 35, you can see, so that's the sound it makes when it's done rendering. Um, but you can see right here, there's, um, you can see these are a lot more in focus as you get further. So it doesn't nearly have that ethereal kind of, um, kind of magical look to it, um, which is what I really love. And so, which is why I choose to shoot with the Boca Panorama or the Brenizer method more often than not than using my 35, be, um, just depending on the location and depending on the look, because I want to keep that compression. I want to keep that super creamy, nice background. I want that, um, that depth of field fall off, but I still want that 35 millimeter, um, sorry, there's my wife. She just texted me. Um, so I, but I still want that 35 millimeter, um, kind of um, angle, or not angle, what am I thinking, 35 millimeter um, kind of vantage point, but I want to use the 85 and have that compression. So instead of losing the compression to get the, the, the focal length of the 35, I now keep the compression of an 85 while still retaining the focal length of a 35. So I love it. Um, super awesome. I think this was also back when we were still shooting Canon, um, which is a little bit different. Oh no, this is Nikon. But um, so... Field of view. Did I mean to say depth of field? Yeah. Nope. Depth of view. Field. 35 millimeter. I don't know what it, what's going on there. So 35 millimeter um, focal length. Um, and uh, so it's just a little bit different. So I like shooting this 85 and using the Boca Panorama because I think it, prov it provides a really different look for your clients. I think it's really quality. It looks really awesome. And um, it's something different. Not a lot of people are doing and not a lot of people know how to do where I just walked you guys through it. And so I hope that was helpful. I walked you guys through a lot of things. Um, if you have any questions with any of that, uh, you can message us on Instagram or you can YouTube, like just go to this because this is going to be on YouTube tonight probably. So you can go onto the YouTube page, comment, um, leave a comment, let us know like uh, any other questions that you guys might have. You can like the picture. Please go ahead and like the YouTube um video and subscribe. So hopefully this was uh, helpful, shows you guys how to walk through a Boca Panorama or Brenizer method, shooting a little bit differently, getting that uh, depth of field that you want with a different focal length. So hope this was helpful. Looking forward to hearing some of your comments and some of your suggestions or questions. So uh, from here, I guess we'll see you guys over on YouTube. I'll put that on there. I'm really excited. Thank you guys so much.